Hi YouTube, this is Relic1974 again. Um, I'm making this video um, due to the request of a few of my friends on uh, PowTalk who uh, are wanting to get to know uh, Universe Sandbox a little bit better. I'm going to try to squeeze as much as I can into a uh, 15 minute video. Um, I guess the best place to start is to show you some of the uh, buttons that are on your main screen here. Up here, uh, these three dots. This is your um, this this is your main menu. Here, you can create a new simulation, open one, save a simulation, restart the one that you already have running. Uh, go to your options window. <coughs> and uh, but there's an update available it'll let you know here these are pre-made simulations and what I usually like to do is to start fresh with our solar system the way it should be if I'm running a uh, real-time accurate simulation and I'm not just messing around so I'll just click on that and give it a second to load and there we go this is a simulation of our solar system, all the planets, all of the uh, major comets and asteroids. You can use your right or mouse button to adjust your view. Up, up and down will adjust it that way. It doesn't matter which button you use, left or right. You can go left and right to rotate around. Your mouse wheel can be used to zoom in, zoom out. Um, notice if you hover your mouse over a orbital, it will show its projected orbit path. Like there's the orbit path of Saturn. Jupiter, and so on. If you want to see information about any orbital, let's say Earth. Just click on it once. Here's all of your orbital properties, physical properties. There's your physical properties. You can change the color of the outline. You can even change the texture we'll get into that <coughs> at, an, at another time and here's the uh, orbital parameters your eccentricity semi-major axis inclination orbit period and down below there's some uh, parameters for its uh, rotation there's its mass there's its velocity and here's some more orbital parameters no, let's see let's go over here this is live mode this is a uh, running the simulation in a realistic mode um, if you want to add an object what you will want to do first and this is important because it, it can affect the physics calculations of the simulation before you add an object or before you edit any of these other orbitals you want to go to, to the edit mode Um, I'm not going to go into the chart mode. Um, I don't use it. Um, I may go into that into another tutorial. This is your normal uh, arrow tool for navigation. This hand tool is used to move or rotate an object in your area of space. This is to uh, select multiple objects, draw a box around them and this is to add a new 
body to your simulation. Um, let's resume the simulation in live mode. Up here you have play and pause. Pause your simulation. Resume it. It shows your time and date. This is to increase or decrease uh, the laws of gravity. Uh, if you were to enter A2, it would double the force of gravity. Uh, 1 is normal. Um, so for our purposes, we're going to leave this at 1. This is your step interval. Every 1 second, if you drop down this box right here, um, you can choose speed or over accuracy, but if you're wanting a very accurate simulation, leave this bar all the way over towards the accuracy. Um, right here it's telling me that in the simulation one real second is equal to um, roughly 17 days. Uh, this is the way this simulation is set up by default. You can change this, but I will warn you, um, if you increase this number, the accuracy uh, becomes less and less. So I would, le I would leave it at this uh, default number right here. I'm going to close this. If you double click on an object, it will make it the center of your view. Right now, the sun is the center of our, uh, is the focus on our screen. <clears throat> Let's say I wanted to take Mars and make it the center object. I just double click on it. Now everything revolves around Mars. We can zoom in and we should have a texture. And you can see it rotating in high speed due to the time frame. We're going to zoom back out a little bit. Um, we're going to use a camera tool. This is just a neat way of uh, displaying what you're looking at. If you click that, you'll get a kind of a, uh, it'll do like a camera pan around the object. That's all it's really used for. Click it again to turn it off. If you want to take a screenshot, you can click this button right here and it'll save it in your documents folder under Universe Sandbox. You can use this to zoom in instead of using your mouse wheel. Use that to zoom out. This right here tells you from left to right of your current screen um, the width, the actual width. So right now it's saying 228,000 kilometers is my field of view from left to right. Watch as I back out. As you back out far enough and the distances become large enough you end up in astronomical units. So this is five astronomical units from left to right. The sidebar over here opens your options. Um, I would want to run my simulation in accuracy mode. Right now it's a normal mode. I would click this if I want my physics calculations to be extremely ac ac um, accurate. As you see, it slowed my rendering down at the sacrifice. That's what you will sacrifice. Uh, but if, like I said, if you're wanting to run a very accurate simulation then that's what you will want to do. Um, I won't go into all of these here. This is a uh, planet labels, the trails that it leaves behind. You can show the actual size of the bodies. We're zoomed so far out that you really can't see that but it will show them in their true size. Highlight marks I like to turn on because it puts a orb around each orbital making it easier to see. Turn that on. Now I've got a little dot that it's easier to make out the orbital. Projected paths will uh, show you the entire orbit. Let me turn this on but it, it clutters up the screen a bit because it shows it for all orbitals. See I turn that on 
slows your rendering down, but it shows you the orbit, the full orbit that every orbital will take. I'm going to turn that back off. Uh, you can play around with some of these uh, other options. You can turn on and off the constellations and their labels and their outlines. Uh, this is lighting system options. Uh, I think the most important thing down here is if you have dual, co dual core or multi-core processors you will want to enable this. It will uh, speed up your simulation and your calculations. And that about covers your options. Let's see, I have five minutes left. Um, I don't know how much more I can get into in this tutorial. Uh, I do plan on making a, another tutorial where we will uh, actually simulate um, an asteroid or a comet or something of that nature. Let me put my center back on the sun. I will double click it. There. The sun is now the center of our view. Let's see. We'll look at it like that. Back out a little bit. I do want to show you one more thing. Objects in Wikipedia. If you don't know where to find the true data points, let's go to our dynamic properties for the sun. Well, I don't think we can adjust the sun. Let's go to a planet. Okay, let's pause this. If we wanted to edit the planet Mars, first you would want to go into edit mode. Now you have all these orbital parameters that you can adjust over here. Now if you are wanting to add an object and you want to know what these actual figures are from JPL, you can Google the object in question and find its Wikipedia page. In this instance I'm looking at YU55. This is an asteroid that is supposed to pass on I think November 11th. If you'll notice over here on the right, if you scroll down you will find just about every data point that you would need and all you gotta do is take these data points I'm gonna move this window off to the side but you can take these data points and simply plug them in here you can type them in or you can click on this and use the up and down arrow you can use these slider bars too, but I find them a little less accurate. Um, I like to either type in the number directly or use the up and down button. So that's just a little tip on using Wikipedia to get your data points. Um, due to my channel restrictions, that's all the time I have right now. Um, in the next video, we'll uh, actually make a simulation and we'll add YU55 in edit mode and see how it turns out. Thanks for watching and uh, keep your eye out for more videos.